Seltzer presents The Adventures of Ellery Queen. Tonight, the makers of Bromo Seltzer bring you another thrilling adventure with Ellery Queen, the celebrated gentleman detective in person. Ellery Queen invites you to match wits with him as he relates another story of a crime he alone unraveled. Before revealing the solution, he stops the play, gives you a chance to solve the mystery. Our guest armchair detectives for this evening are Miss Sonia Bigman, contributing editor of Time Magazine, and Edward Pauley, who plays Steve Wilson on the famous radio program, Big Town. And now, Ellery Queen, master detective and your host for the next half hour. Thank you, Ernest Chappell, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's case will really test your mettle as an armchair detective. Because I can assure you, it had us thinking hard. It's about a man who could disappear almost at will. I call it The Adventure of the Vanishing Magician. <laughs> Mamie! Mamie Dover! What's the matter? There you are, Mr. Forsyth. Oh, dear, my dinner will be ruined if that husband of mine doesn't get home soon. You'd think after tw- 20 years of married life, a man would get to know this spare would get dry. You were crying, Mamie, and it wasn't about Hal or the spare ribs. Now, you go back in the parlor, Forsyth, and read your variety and billboard while I see if I can't save my dinner. You were crying about the house, weren't you, Mamie? <laughs> yes. Well, we haven't lost the old shack yet, Mamie. <laughs> Now, stop crying. Think of the good old days. Oh, the good old days. What for? We'll never see him again. Oh, don't you believe it. Waterville's coming back. Yes, sir. Before you know it, you'll be right back in the old five-a-day again. Hal and Mamie Dover, songs and patter. Maybe Waterville's coming back, Forsyth, but Hal and me won't come back with it. Nor you, nor Avanti. The great Avanti, magician supreme. Gilbert Forsyth, quick change artist. Oh, it's old stuff, passe. They'd laugh us off. Yeah? Well, I'm as good as I ever was. I've kept in practice, Mame. I haven't let the hinges on my theatrical trunk upstairs get rusty. No, sir. Remember that quick change act I had? Riley of the New York Finest? Where I played all seven parts? Why, it laid him in the aisle. It was corny, Forsyth. Hal and me were corny. Avanti and his magic was corny. We're through, and you know it. Through, am I? I'll show you all, and especially that sarcastic booker who threw me out of his office yesterday. Oh, what's the use? You knew we were through when you, Avanti, Hal, and me pooled our savings 13 years ago to buy this house. Yeah, you're right, Mame. We thought we'd have at least a roof over our heads. Now Oh, we... there's the front door. Hal? Me, Mame. Hal, I thought you'd never get Home? Home? Oh, evening, Forsyth. Hal, did you see that pagan at the bank? I saw him. What'd he say, Hal? He busted a gut laughing. Uh, oh, Hal. Uh, so we lose the house, is that it? Next week, unless the U.S. Marines save us in the nick of time. But, Hal, what'll we all do? Where'll we go? Search me. Oh, Mame, oh. stop crying. Huh? No, where I told you we did wrong when we mortgaged that house five years ago. And what were we supposed to eat, Forsyth? Your 1929 billboard clippings? Hal Dover, I'll have you know. Yeah. Well, now, next week is next week. Right now, we have a dinner to eat. Though heaven knows, Hal Dover, you've done your darndest to spoil it. Now, sit down, both of you. I ain't hungry, Mame. You're going to eat, mister, and we're not going to wait for the great advantage. I'll have the ribs out in the jiffy if they ain't dry as dust. All right. Guess I'm jumpy, Forsyth. Yeah, it's my fault, Hal. It's losing the house and all the money we put into it. Going back to a furnished room. Avanti? Hello, Manny. Hal, Forsyth. Where are you, my friend? Uh, in the dining room, Avanti. Ah, I am late, no? Hmm. The long, long faces. No luck today, eh, Hal? Sit down and eat your soup, Avanti. Avanti? Yes. Oh, it's about time. Now, now hurry with your soup. Attention. The great Avanti is about to give a performance. Ah, uh, what's he so gay about? Cut the clown on Avanti. I ain't in the mood. No? Then I shall put you in the mood. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I may have your attention, please, observe. There is nothing up my sleeve. Cut oh, it out, I said. Hell. Hell's on edge, Avanti. Oh, who wouldn't be losing the house? And who says we are losing the house, huh? The bank that's holding the mortgage, you punchy dope. Avanti says it is not so. What? Uh-huh. Ah, your faces light up, eh? My friends, I have it all fixed. Avanti, we won't lose our house. No, Mamie. And what is more, 
We shall have enough dough to last us a long, long time. Ah, you're crazy with the cold. That's something crooked. No. It is not something crooked, Forsyth. But, Avanti, you ain't serious. How can you save the house? Follow my instructions and have faith. What do we have to do, Avanti? Nearly, when the proper time comes to get out of the house for one evening, leaving it unoccupied. That is all. What are you going to do, burn it down? Now, even that wouldn't do any good. Our fire insurance laps. Now, you two stop. Avanti. Yes? You want us to leave the house for one evening and, and that'll save it? Yes, Mimi. I uh, suppose you'll do it by magic, Avanti. Yes, Mr. Dover. By magic. <laughs> And there, ladies and gentlemen, you have the beginning of our mystery. We'll be back in just a moment to tell you more. But first, Ernest Chappell. I heard tell the other day about a lady who paid her first visit to New York just recently. That was plenty exciting for her, all right. Even though the bright lights aren't quite as bright as usual, there was plenty to see and do. Plenty? I'll say so. I never saw so many people or places at one time in my life. And the crowd. <laughs> yes, indeed, the crowd. Well, after a few days of Helter Skelter running around, the lady woke up in her hotel room one morning feeling like this. Oh, my head. Yes, a common sick headache. Not unusual when you're on the move more than you're used to being. But was she going to let that stand in the way of seeing all there was left to see in New York? Not on your life. I had headaches in my own hometown, too. And if Bromo Seltzer could make me feel so much better back home, I guess it would work just as well in New York. So she up and went down to the drugstore, had the clerk mix her a Bromo Seltzer at the fountain, and... And pretty soon I felt like my old self again. So I went on to see Grant's tomb and the Statue of Liberty just as I'd planned. Ah, <laughs> good for you. And good for Bromo Seltzer. You'll find it's handy to have around, friends. So get a big blue bottle of Bromo Seltzer tomorrow. And now back to our story. It's two mornings later, the scene, Inspector Queen's office at police headquarters. There's the match on Miss Porter, Inspector. Hi, Petey. Come in, you two. A very call to headquarters. That means a case. Is it a case, Inspector? <laughs> it's a case, Nicky, but best if I know what kind. Henry, shake hands with Mr. Avanti, Mr. Steele. My son, Henry, Secretary, Miss Porter. How do you do? How do, you do? do? No. This really isn't a matter for the police, son. The inspector and me thought it was a lot more in your line, Maestro. Screwball stuff. <laughs> Sounds interesting, Sergeant. First, I'd better explain, son, that Mr. Steele here is a very wealthy businessman with a peculiar hobby. I thought I recognized you, Mr. Steele. I have read an article about you in a magazine recently with your photograph. <laughs> That's me, Miss Porter. Your hobby's collecting magic tricks, isn't it? Yes, indeed. I'm an amateur expert in magic. Know more about magic than these fellows know themselves. Eh, hey, Vandy? Mr. Steele, you are the boogeyman of my unfortunate profession. Mr. Steele's a shower-upper, Maestro. These guys make up magic tricks. He figures them out. I see. For well, years, Mr. Steele's had a standing offer of $25,000 to any professional magician who can show him a magic trick he can't solve in 24 hours. Wonderful. You're sort of a magic detective, eh, Mr. Steele? <laughs> yes, sir. The best of them have tried to collect that $25,000. No one's collected it yet. Mr. Steele's seen through every magic illusion ever invented, Ellery. Mr. Steele will not see through mine. You see, Avanti's taken up Mr. Steele's challenge. He claims he can pull a trick that'll fool even Mr. Steele. Oh, swell. What's your illusion, Mr. Avanti? I shall disappear in thin air. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> But that's not new, Mr. Avanti. Houdini made an elephant disappear in full view of a theater audience. I saw the old master do it myself. All disappearance illusions are done with mirrors and apparatus. You won't fool me with one of those moth-eaten tricks of Auntie. But, Mr. Steele, I do not use mirrors or apparatus. Huh? Well, Auntie, I'll hold you to that. No apparatus, Mr. Avanti? Well, um, but may I ask why you've come to the police? <laughs> it's going to be a case for the missing persons, Bureau, ain't it? Oh, <laughs> I wish Mr. Steele to be completely satisfied about the conditions under which my illusion takes place. You see, Henry, Avanti and some old-time board of her friends of his jointly own a two-story brownstone in Chelsea that's in danger of foreclosure. It's one of them old babies, Maestro, and a solid block of attached houses, all alike. All alike, And hmm? Mr. Avanti wants to win Mr. Steele's money to save the house? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Steele, but from now on, I'm on Mr. Avanti's side. <laughs> <laughs> the more the merrier, Miss Porter. Disappear into thin air without mirrors or apparatus? <laughs> no. Mr. Avanti, just how do you intend using the house in this magic illusion of yours? Ah, 
First, Mr. Queen, I wish the house to be examined from basement to roof, inside and out, to satisfy Mr. Steele that there are no sliding panels, hidden passages, tunnels, or secret hiding places anywhere inside. There goes my solution. <laughs> Secondly, Inspector Queen may station police as guards at each exit from the house to see that I do not escape. As many men as you please, Inspector. On the roof, in the basement, the backyard, at the doors and windows. In fact, I shall be insulted if you do not put a veritable human cordon around the house. <laughs> You're sure making it impossible for yourself, Avanti. Ah, that is the essence of the illusion. Finally, I shall enter, alone, in full view of all of you. And you will not find me in the house when you look. I shall have vanished. And then, Mr. Steele, you have 24 hours to solve the problem of my disappearance. Or pay me $25,000. You're crazy, Avanti, but by George, you're on. When will you be ready? Tonight. Well, you gentlemen will have to count me out. I can't touch it. No crime involved. Inspector, please make an exception. Dad, uh, uh, excuse us a moment, gentlemen. Oh, yes, very well, Mr. Queen. Dad, cooperate no. with Avanti. But I've no authority, son, a thing like oh, this. Oh, you can find the authority, Inspector. It means so much to Mr. Avanti. My other guy's a nutter of publicity, huh? He's neither. He's doing it for that little group of X five a day or Sergeant. They need that $25,000 to save their house. That's all very true. It'd be a sport, Dad. Play along with Avanti. It's a favor to me. Well, what'll the big jinx say? And he talks three languages. Inspector, please. Well, blast it. All right. Thanks, Dad. Uh, Mr. Avanti... Mr. Steele. Okay, Mr. Queen. I ought to have my head examined, but... Okay, gentlemen. Oh, good. Fine. The Vanity get ready to disappear from that house of yours. Tonight at nine. Do you really think a Vanity's going to be able to pull this off, Hal? I don't know, ma'am. I'm hoping. That man Steele must be as crazy as a Vandy. Without apparatus, impossible. Why, when I headed the bill at the New York Palace back in 27... Yes, I... yes, we know for sight. You laid them in the aisles, eh? <laughs> ah, Mamie, Mamie, smile. The house is as good as ours again. Oh, Vandy, please don't miss. Vandy, well, good luck. Avanti, I'm not against you. I, well, it's just that, well, people get so darn bitter. I understand. And I will not fail you. Come on, you people. You're not supposed to be here, Mr. No. and Mrs. Dover, Mr. Forsyth. Now, according to the agreement, you folks wait in that corner cafeteria till this is over. And don't worry, Mrs. Dover. I have a hunch Mr. Vanity's really going to do it. Oh, I hope so, Miss Porter. Come on, Hal. Okay, and Mr. Forsyth, right, we'll get some coffee. Avanti will bring the bacon to the house. Now... Are you gentlemen all satisfied? Yes, Mr. Avanti. And uh, where is Mr. Steele? Here I am. Are you ready, Avanti? If you are, Mr. Steele. Hold it a minute. Billy. Yes, Inspector. Hurry up before the reporters get wind of this. Everything's set, Sergeant. Yes, sir, myself. Uh, Mr. Steele, are you satisfied that there are no secret passageways or hiding places in the house? Well, it's true. I searched it myself. It's okay, Mr. Steele. I had a department expert look the house over from top to bottom. He says there's no way out of the house except through the regular doors and windows and the roof and cellar. I'll testify to that, Mr. Steele. I look myself. Is the house completely empty now, Sergeant? Well, no. I met one cockroach in there. He kissed me. He was so glad to see somebody. <laughs> that was good for a lap of Tony Pastors. Come on, Billy. How about the police detail? Uh, okay, Inspector. The whole place is surrounded. I've even got eight cops on the roof watching the roof door. Don't worry, Inspector. He won't get out. Okay, Billy. Mr. Vandy, go to it. I shall, Inspector. Now, you gentlemen will please allow me exactly two hours inside the house. At the stroke of eleven, answer. <laughs> and try to find me. Vinny, escort a Vandy up this stoop and see that he enters the house. <laughs> up to daisy, magician. Brother, right your favorite. The best of luck, Mr. Vandy. And I hope we'll not be seeing you. Hey, you'll see him, Miss Porter. Don't worry. In you go, Vandy. Arrivederci. Until later. Watch closely, Mr. Steele. We don't want you saying afterwards he didn't go in. I'm satisfied. He went in. Keep that back of yours against the front door up there, Sergeant. He'll have to ooze out of a crack to get by me, my scum. Well, now for a two-hour wait. Might as well sit down here beside me on this bottom step, Mr. Steele. With pleasure, my dear. <laughs> if a bandy gets out of this house now, he is a magician. <laughs> Be 
exciting. All I've got out of it so far is a bad case of yawns. Isn't the time nearly up, Henry? Uh, yes, Dad. One minute to eleven. Two hours. He'd need two centuries. <laughs> Don't laugh yet, Mr. Steele. Oh, here's Sergeant Bealey back. Bealey, shake a leg up this stoop. What do the men report? You've made the rounds of the police on guard, Sergeant. Yeah, Mr. Steele. They all say the same thing. The bandy didn't come out. How about the roof, Dad? You men up there in the roof. Yes, Inspector. Everything under control up there, officer? Bandy ain't come out of the house this way, Inspector. Hey, boys. Hey, Inspector, we're just stunned over. We're dying from the excitement. It's exactly 11 o'clock. Let's go in and see. Yes, let's get it over with. Well, well, open the door, Bailey. Okay. Wait, Sergeant. <laughs> I see it now by George. <laughs> the tricky devil. Simple as ABC, too. What simple as ABC, Mr. Steele? Look, Queen. A band he built up the psychology of his audience. In this case, us. By making us wait out here for two whole hours. Of course he's still in there. But he's hiding in the hall somewhere, and he's waiting for us to come in. So that we'll impatiently rush upstairs? Exactly. Then he'll simply sneak out out of the house through this front door we'll have left unguarded. Of course, that may be a vantage plan, Mr. Steele, but somehow... If it is, it won't work. Vinnie, stay on guard at this front door while we go in. Don't move a step from this door. Is that what I get after waiting two hours? Okay. Ellery, for goodness sake, open that door. Here we go. Vandy! I don't see him hitting the fire down here. No place for him to hide. It's awfully quiet, isn't it? Mr. Avanti? Oh, dear. Well, well, Inspector, where did Ellery and Mr. Steele go? Don't tell me they disappeared, too. They're searching the downstairs rooms, Nicky. Here I am, Dad. He's not down here. Oh, Mr. Steele, any luck? No, he must be upstairs. Avanti, come down out of there. Let's go upstairs, too. Right, Dad. If he's really disappeared, it's the most marvelous thing I ever heard of. Oh, Mr. Steele, what... He's not in that bedroom. Avanti! Queen, try that room. Right, Steele. Oh, that's empty. I'll try this one. Oh, looks like a study. Oh, not in this not one in either. There. Dad, did you look at the stairs leading to the roof trap door? Not hiding there, Henry. Well, Mr. Steele, it looks as if... No. There's one door we missed. This one. Oh, yes. That's the door to Avanti's own room. And this is where he is. Game's up, Avanti. We've caught you. Confounded, Avanti, open this door and stop making a ridiculous fool of yourself. You might try the door, Mr. Steele. It may not be locked, you know. No, it isn't. He isn't here. This is the last room. But it's not possible. Wait. That clothes closet. He's hiding in this clothes closet. <laughs> it's empty. I thunder he did it. But, but he can't have. Mr. Steele, you might be interested in this note I just found on Avanti's bed. A note? Let me see it too, Avanti. <laughs> What did the little whiz write, then? Gentlemen, you may search this house until doomsday, but you will not find me for the simple reason that I am not here. Mr. Steele, you have 24 hours to figure out how I vanished into thin air or failing pay me $25,000. Signed, the Great Avanti. Listen, Mr. Steele, how many times do I have to tell you Vandy didn't sneak past me at the front door? But he did it some way. He got out some way. Oh. This is getting monotonous. You still have five minutes of your 24 hours left, Mr. Steele. He didn't get out. He's still in the house. Where, Mr. Steele? You practically picked the house to pieces in the past 23 hours and 55 minutes. Well. Inspector, you're sure the police are still on guard outside? They mustn't leave their post yet. You hear me? I don't know why I take this from you, Mr. Steele. But my men haven't left their post since they came on duty last night. Then where is he? I can't understand it. Not a single clue. Not one. I disagree, Mr. Steele. You what, Queen? It's really a very simple problem. Don't tell me. My straw. Yes, Sergeant. I know how Avanti did it. Queen, tell me how. Quick, before my time's up. Delroy Queen, don't you dare. He's supposed to figure it out for himself. You heard the voice of the people, Mr. Steele. I'll give you $5,000 if you'll tell me how Avanti performed this trick, Queen. Ten horn. Make it ten, Mr. Queen. Ten thousand. You're a chiseler, Mr. Steele. Sergeant, open the front door. We'll wait for Avanti on the stoop. Well, please. I'll make it fifteen, Queen. Hurry. Mr. Steele, I'm beginning to dislike you. You want to chisel these people out of their home when you've lost a bet you yourself made. It's not that. It's my reputation. Hands up. He's lost. Oh. Yes, you've lost, Mr. Steele. Our four ex vaudeville friends of one. I want to <laughs> say, And my here friend. comes the great Avanti strolling up the street. There, 
ladies and gentlemen, you have the mystery. While you try to puzzle out just how Avanti disappeared, suppose we see how our guests are making out. Nikki, will you introduce our guest armchair detectives for this evening, please? All right, Ellery. Our first guest tonight is Miss Sonia Bigman, contributing editor for theater and radio on one of the nation's most important and widely read publications, Time Magazine. Miss Bigman is an avid mystery story fan, and as such, we heartily welcome her as guest armchair detective tonight. Our second guest is a man who, like yourself, Ellery, is tough on criminals. He's Edward Pauley, who plays the part of Steve Wilson on the famous radio program Big Town. Big Town is the inside story of the big metropolitan newspaper, the Illustrated Press. Each Tuesday evening, Steve Wilson, as managing editor, with the beautiful Lorelei and ace photographer Dusty Miller, give radio one of its most exciting programs. Ellery? Thank you, Nikki. Miss Bigman, how do you think the great Avante disappeared? Well, I can only think because I'm not not guessing it at all. The only thought that... Uh, that I can tie up this thing is uh, when Mr. and Mrs. Forsyth or Hal and Mamie Dover were talking about the great Avanti. They said he had once played all seven parts in something called Riley of the New York Finest. Mm-hmm. I think he probably got himself dressed up as a policeman and walked in and out all over the place. Mm-hmm. Without being seen? Well, he just joined the cops or oh. something like that. The only other thing is, that the only other clue might be that all the houses look alike. Thank you, Miss Bigman. <laughs> and now, Mr. Pauley, how do you think the great Avanti disappeared? Well, Ellery, a managing editor, isn't a detective. <laughs> Not much good without his staff. <laughs> Now, if I could have Laura Lye and Dusty Miller and Fletch to help me out, I, I sound like an expert. Well, I'll just have to take the flyer and say that I'll string along with Miss Bigman on yeah. her solution. As a matter of fact, I actually have some mental notes here in that direction. I follow pretty closely what she uh-huh. does. So I, in other words, my mind goes back to the fact that there was a quick change artist involved, and I think that, uh, like a lot of the actual function of these disappearing tricks is that it happens before we actually think it. We're expecting it to happen. Thank you, Mr. Farley and Miss Bigman. We're going to tell you the correct solution to tonight's mystery in a moment. But first, Ernest Chappell has a most important word to say to you. Friends, before you crumple a piece of paper to toss it into the fire, wait half a second and think about this. Waste paper is mighty valuable. America's paper mills need every scrap in order to produce enough new paper and paper board to make the containers and cartons that are so essential. Now, you'll be doing your country a real service if, instead of burning waste paper or otherwise disposing of it, you sell it to junk dealers, donate it to charitable organizations, or hold it for your local salvage committee. Consult your newspaper for dates of collection. We've got to get our mills back to full production so they can make the cartons for food, the containers for shells, the bomb pins, camouflage paper, dozens of other vital products needed to win the war. <laughs> All right, Mr. Steele. Cough up. Now, Mandy, here's my check for 25000 And I still can't believe you did it. My friends and I thank you, Mr. Steele. But you've got to tell me how you did it. I've just paid a lot of money for not knowing. Yes, I think we ought to tell, Mr. Steele, eh, Mr. Vanty? You've solved my illusion, Mr. Queen. Oh, he always solves everything, Mr. Vanty. Gallery, please. I tell you, if you don't, I won't sleep tonight. All right, Lily. Well, our magician went into the house. Two hours later, we searched it, and he was gone. Vanished, as he claimed, in thin air. Yet the reports from the policeman on guard at every exit from the house were that Mr. Vanty had not left. But he did leave, Ellery. That's a fact. Yes, sir. Consequently, when your policeman said he hadn't left, they only thought he hadn't. He had. You mean Mr. Avanti got out of the house under the eyes of grown policemen without their knowing it? It's the only possible explanation, Nicky. But how? Well, what was the situation? A house surrounded by police, men in uniform, a couple of dozen of them. Take the roof. Eight uniformed police on guard. Let's consider those eight policemen. Each officer, wherever he turned, saw another officer, another blue coat. The police uniform is a great leveler of personality. And besides, Mr. Avanti cleverly set the time of the illusion at night when visibility is poor. <laughs> and because the roof held the largest congregation of police, I say Mr. Avanti got away by the roof disguised in a police uniform. Oh, sure. What a fool. What a fool. Confirmation, yes. 
Mr. Vanty asked for two hours when obviously a few minutes would have sufficed. Why did he ask for two hours? Because he's a student of human nature, like all magicians. He knew that in two hours the watching police would be bored, that the vigilance would relax, that they'd start trudging around the roof to keep warm, smoking, chattering, milling about. So that Avante, watching from inside the roof trap door, merely had to wait for a single instant when none of the eight pairs of eyes was on the roof door, and in that instant, slipped noiselessly out onto the roof in a policeman's uniform. And there he was, on the roof at night, just another officer of the law. Sorry, oh, well, you... might have done the same thing, not disguised. But he knew he'd never be able to get off the roof once he slipped out of the trap door without being spotted. Dressed as a policeman, however, all he had to do from that moment on was saunter quietly about among the eight real policemen, minding his own business, until he saw a chance to slip on to an adjoining roof. Remember, this is an attached house, and make his escape from some house farther down the street. <laughs> He may just make the trick possible by insisting on a big police guard. But where did Mr. Avanti get the policeman's uniform, Ellery? There was even a clue to that. We've all been told that Mr. Forsythe, the quick change artist, lives in the house and his old theatrical trunk is in his room. And what was the sketch Forsythe used to do in the glamour days of vaudeville? He used to play all seven parts in a skit called Riley of the New York Finest. So in Forsythe's trunk, there must have been a New York policeman's uniform. Mr. Avanti, I should like to shake the hand of an artist. No, no, Mr. Queen. The honor is mine. Believe me, Mr. Queen, I am so happy it wasn't you I challenged to solve my illusion of the vanishing magician. (laughs) (laughs) And there, ladies and gentlemen, you have the solution to the mystery. I want to thank Miss Bigman and Mr. Pauley for appearing as guest armchair detectives this evening. We want especially to compliment both of them for their skill in solving the crime. We have for both Miss Bigman and Mr. Pauley a personal gift from Bromo Seltzer, also an autographed copy of my latest mystery anthology, The Female of the Species, and a subscription to Ellery Queen's Mystery Magazine. Hang on now, friends, because Ellery will be right back to tell you about next week's mystery. Meanwhile, you can grab a seat aboard the one and only talking train. Here we go. All aboard. Fight, headache, three ways. Yes, that's the right track to quick, effective relief from common sick headache. Bromo Seltzer. You see, Bromo Seltzer fights headache not one, but three ways. Bromo Seltzer quickly helps relieve that pain in your head. Bromo Seltzer quickly helps settle upset stomach. Bromo Seltzer quickly helps calm jumpy nerves. Now, you can take Bromo Seltzer while it's fizzing or after it settles down. Use it only as directed on the label. For frequent or persistent headaches, see your doctor. But when it comes to common sick headaches, take a tip from our educated train. Fight headache three ways. And now, Ellery, suppose you tell us about next week's case. Huh? Sure, Cat. Sure, Chappie. Well, ladies and gentlemen, next week, a young lady offers me $5,000 to get back the stolen sum of $3. I can't tell you more. I'd tell you too much. So I'll just caution you to get your thinking caps all shined up next Saturday for the adventure of the $3 robbery. <laughs> And don't forget the other great Bromo Seltzer show friends, Vox Pop, the show that travels America. Next Monday, Vox Pop starts its 12th year on the air. That's it, its 12th year in radio when it takes you to Halifax, Nova Scotia for interviews with Canadian Navy U-boat fighters. Don't miss Vox Pop next Monday. Consult your local paper for the time and station. Music for the Adventures of Ellery Queen is by Charles Paul. This program came to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.